Okay, today we're working on a 2000 Fleetwood Bounder Ford chassis, V8 chassis here. And uh, they're going to put a ramp, the client's going to put a handicap ramp, um, and it's going to be installed uh, here into this RV in the back there. But uh, just doing general uh, overview, these, this is your hood, so you know it goes up and down. Um, your battery is here. Your coolant, make sure to fill to the appropriate cold fill level around here. Uh, check that and make sure there's enough coolant. You can see it's low down here, so a little bit of coolant should be added here to about this level. Uh, make sure you use the right coolant uh, for the RV, you know, if it's a Ford, Ford uh, coolant, the appropriate coolant. And have your charge, your batteries charged periodically. There's a little sign that says the age. This is one is from 6 uh, 2018. Um, other things here is your fuse box. You can see you just move that to the side and your fuse box is there. So if you you know ever blow a fuse, you can go down there and get those fuses checked. Now inside the RV, um, you have your battery bank, auxiliary battery bank under the step. You remove the step, and there it is. You can see um, this one is from 419, and this one's from 419. So both batteries relatively uh, new, deep cycle interstate batteries, and they are connected uh, in parallel or in, or in sequence. Uh, so here we go to come on inside. You can see they're gonna, uh, you know, work on this one and make the handicap accessible. But uh, here's some of the plumbing and stuff um, that is in the rig. To, you know, to start this rig, your first thing you need to do is come up here by the door. On top of the door is the battery disconnect switch here. This is off, off, on, on. Make sure they're on when you're ready to go and use the car, the rig, and turn them off when you're not using it. If you're not going to use... Um, if you're not going to use the, um, the the rig for a while, turn off you know the main battery for the ignition. Turn that off if you're not going to use it because there's parasitic draws. It'll draw power and then kill your battery. If you're not using any of the house power, turn that off too. You know, actually keep them off whenever you're not using them. That's the best way. And then turn them on only when you're using them. So there you go. Once you have that on, you can come over here and. Uh, you know, you can start the engine. You can see everything starts perfectly fine and, uh, you know, runs good. Now, a lot of people want to know, how do we connect the OBD reader? If you have one of these OBD, you know, readers, how do you connect it, OBD2? Well, you have to be able to dip, lift the dash. And under the dash here, you can see there's a little bit of a, of a stick that comes out for support. And right here, you can read it is your OBD data link connector. Make sure you grab your OBD um, connector, go underneath, come from the bottom, and right over here, you can see that's the connector. It will connect right and interface right in here like that. And that's pretty much how you install it, okay? And then also, uh, just put that back if you're not using it. A lot of people want to know where's the engine? Here's the engine bay. If you lift this straight up, people don't even know, but it's right here. This is the engine bay. And then right over here, um, there's a latch. There's one on this side, one on that side. And that's how you unlatch it. Here you can see your fuel injectors. Um, you can see your air intake, alternator, and your transmission. So if you need to service the transmission or the engine, most of the work can be done from here. All right.